like that same insurance is like 50 some thousand dollars. It's really tough to do as one person for sure. 600 a piece back then and that was like 2,500 in revenues. So my name is Colin Reinders. I started Waveco LC, Waveco Limited Company back in 2019. Launched downtown Grand Haven. You know, I'd always had like a knack for business. I started off like with some smaller things. Um, my parents have, they do senior living throughout Michigan. So like I started with uh, like a little tech business inside their sites and I decided like when I was 18 in college I wanted to do something else and I wanted to do it in our hometown Grand Haven so like during the summers here we have like a big boom Coast Guard City USA we have the festival come through and a huge problem that happens every year is like the transportation parking getting around so at first I was thinking maybe like oh an electric bike with like a pedicab or something I think it was we went out to Nashville for my sister's now husband's bachelor party and they had scoots out there so I was like oh like I, it would be pretty killer to bring scoots back to Grand Haven and that's how I settled with like rideshare scooters so then I was thinking about like the name the brand like what's it like on the lake shore and that's you know, it's wavy, so what do you do? Like, you ride the wave, like, keep it cool. So that's how I settled with Waveco scooters, and I started working with Segway back then. They had, like, some scooters out and about, and I started with, like, ES4 scooters. So that was, like, a model of scooter that they basically took, like, a consumer rideshare scooter. If you were to go and buy one, and they slapped some stuff on it and called it a rideshare scooter. Those were, like, I started with a fleet of 30 of them, and they weren't super, like, durable. They weren't, like, really what I needed as a rideshare operator. So then I started looking into, like, they were coming out with a newer line of scooters, and that was, like, the Max scooter. So I got 30 of them, and then those lasted basically about two years per scooter. So the ES4 lasted 2019, 2020, and then it was like 21 to 22 was them Segway Maxes. And that's kind of where I'm at now. This year I decided like I got connected to a guy out in Milwaukee and he has like hundreds of these, uh, they're called Actons. So I went and picked up a bunch of them and now like we're here in this summer. It's kind of crazy. Like I don't really know how to talk about this stuff because it don't even feel like as much like a business right now as it should just because like, I have the insurance that the city asked for. I have like all the components at play and I had a relationship established with them. But nowadays, um they have like a $25 impound thing where if they're not like perfectly in the right spot, they're impounding them and the city isn't really like playing nice. So the last four years I was downtown and I had like a brick and mortar storefront where people would like come and rent from too. Nowadays I'm like making this the switch to micro mobility ride share and I'm talking with uh, some, some guys out in Muskegon who have a contract with them but Grand Haven hasn't really been playing nice. So even though I have parking zones downtown, like I officially launched this weekend with Chief's permission and then he continued to impound several of them. So when you first started, how many scooters did you have and then did that grow over time? So I mean, I started with 30, uh, they're the ES4s that I was talking about. Quickly realized that I would need a mechanic to like help me get stuff done. So someone local just spotted one like laying on the side of the road, brought it back to his house and then I tracked it there because like all the scooters have like a GPS, like it's called the IoT Internet of Things. And that like turns it from just a normal scooter into something that's like interactable with your phone or like into something I can track with GPS. So I found that scooter on the side of the road. Well, he found it on the road and then I tracked it to his house and then he became my mechanic. So his name's Jesse. Wouldn't have been able to do it without him, for sure. I have like a whole room with like thousands of dollars of Milwaukee tools and just like accumulated things to keep the scoots in maintenance. But it started with those 30 and then over two years changed into like the different, the Max series of the Segways. How much did it cost to get those scooters and what did that investment look like? Back then I had like 20,000 some saved that I stuck in the stock markets. I pulled that out after two years, honestly like it's been a long ride, so to like just pull numbers up is, is tough, but those scooters were pretty much like 600 a piece back then. Nowadays, the new ones, like a bunch of tariff stuff changed when Trump became president. So like the scooters that I was getting for like 800 a piece, those are the newer styles that are now like 15. So you're basically looking like at around a thousand a scooter, I guess, financed. And then I also have like an app. I started working with someone called Lattice that, out of Velo Labs in Canada. They helped me for like two years build a white label like custom app. And then I didn't really like the way that things were progressing with them. So I also started working with an e-hub company called Commute. And that was like to take a normal rideshare scooter and add like some charging infrastructure into it that like a municipal could have staged around town. So instead of just like parking it at a zone, like a Lime scooter, 
and like actually plug it in. However, like they they uh, ended up not being a great customer or a great partner for me because they just didn't really like value my time. And one of the co-founders actually like left their company and is doing some stuff in the micro mobility world. So like he sunk with me personally. He like figured out what an operator like me would need to like have an actual functioning app. And uh, nowadays they're called Roamer. And that's like the technically the, the platform that my app operates off of. However, there's just so much craziness. Like there's so much stuff to like talk about and so much nuance. There's like remnants of my old app in the app store. And so like I haven't actually gotten my, my Waveco app launched live yet. It's like I've still been using the Blue Duck app, which is who them people are with all those scooters. That's who I went and got the scooters from. What did the like a day to day look like for people renting scooters and what did you have to do daily? Did you have to make communications or was it all through the app? So like every single day I woke up and I went down to my spot. It was kind of like I was like the DJ of our downtown, it was like, I was playing music, I was running scooters, I was helping people like understand like, why are these things in our community? Every day, basically I would get down there, I would charge them, I would make sure they were in like the right like states. One of the, like, the, the biggest things has been like the insurance. So it's not like you can just get a bunch of rental vehicles, whether it's bikes, scooters, whatever, and rent them. Like you actually have to have commercial grade general liability insurance. That's more most important when you're working with a municipal. So say like you're gonna be on anywhere other than public property or private property if you're going to be using like municipal space or even another private party's like property you always almost always have to have like a high level of insurance annually that's come in it started at like just a couple thousand like six to eight thousand back in 2019 and nowadays it's like that same insurance is like 50 some thousand dollars and so it's like i have a contract with the city that lets me use their property. And one of the big contingencies is that I have like liability insurance with a million per occurrence. So like I dished out like 15K beginning of August, like as the down payment to like be able to operate on the city property. But even though I have a contract in place with the city, like they haven't played nice. So basically I haven't generated any revenues back on that 15K. And it's like all of a sudden I'm about to have another 13.6K payment because it's like I paid the down payment and then it was once every three months so that's why like right now I'm in I'm in such a turbulent place is because I had a city that was saying like hey in order to operate you need this this and this I finally pulled the trigger on the things that they said I needed and, and now I haven't been able to make the revenues back so there's a lot of financing at play with rentals especially if you're talking about liability insurance these scooters aren't all paid off. Like the second fleet, the maxes are, but like I put, just picked up a hundred new ones from Milwaukee. It was an unsecured loan. I happened to like know the guy and get connected through the industry. And it's like, he's actually going out of business with thousands of these things. And so he's just got a warehouse sitting with a bunch of them right now. And I got like connected to him. And it was like, otherwise they're gonna scrap all these units. So. My deal was like 500 bucks per scooter on an unsecured loan. I was gonna get them back by the end of next summer. And that's better than him just having a bunch of scoots like sitting around in a warehouse. But them things originally probably cost like 900 to 1200 bucks. So like the main things with rentals is like balancing like the asset costs, you're, you got a bunch of vehicles that are out deployed on the ground and they're gonna get maintenance or they're gonna get ride time. So you gotta think about the parts that you're gonna need, the cost of them, the cost of the labor to do it if you can't do it yourself. And then you've got things like the liability insurance. You're working with like public and private. I'd say the municipal people are the, are the toughest to deal with, especially if you're in a community that like, is kind of adverse to rideshare, you know? Like we saw, if we're talking about scooters and rideshare specifically, we saw a bird spin and lime come in. They kind of ran like guerrilla warfare tactics. Like they dumped scooters everywhere. Their, their call, like their market was high quantity, high demand. So they would just dump a bunch of scooters and a bunch of people would ride them and that kind of left like a bad impression in the world. Like, hey, like these scooters are everywhere. They're getting thrown in rivers. They're being stacked up in piles on campuses. And so to navigate that with like a smaller municipal, it's like, hey, like I'm local. This is how I understand our community. This is what I'm trying to do. But there's still all that negativity from like the past and say like the city is, is cool with you and they give you a contract and X, Y, and Z, but the chief of police doesn't like what's going on. Then he still ultimately has the power to like pull scoots off and per our worded contract, like store them and then place a fine on them until I can get them back. So in every like different market, there's there's lots of variables at play. It's really tough to do as one person for sure. 
Like I had an accountant, he would help me make sure I'm good for like taxes and stuff. But like really just balancing like the amount of operational energy to get like assets deployed around a, a town is a lot more than to have like a single spot. So if I was just like downtown, if I had my spot located downtown, it's it's easier. I would roll up there, I'd get the scoots um, placed out. People would end up like footfall traffic coming to me. Then it's just, I can have a smaller amount of liability insurance. Were there any other forms Forms of advertising that you had to do or were you relying on foot traffic? I had a website built that was a couple thousand bucks. I did it through uh, like Go High Level and WordPress and that was just kind of like people all over town were like, where are these scooters? Like these scooters kind of advertise themselves. Like if you get a bunch of people out on them having fun and you're someone in the town, you're like, where do I get that? I try to make it real easy for them to find me. And like, if you look up Grand Haven scooters, like Wave Coast, the only thing that comes up. So I did some digital marketing. I have Facebook, I have Instagram, some social media. I hired, uh, there were several people who came and just like rented scooters with the company and then like got some really good media. Like that was their passion. They, they like were pho photographers or videographers and they're like, hey, like, we took some of this content while we were out and about and like we want you to have it because we're trying to help you survive or like thrive and but besides like some some actual signage that i would have printed at staples maybe like 50 dollars a frame poster laminated or a big banner i'd have printed it was just a, like a light mix of digital and physical were you renting them per hour or is it per day? Like how did that pay structure work? Yeah, so the schema was to have it like be a micro mobility asset. I mean that I thought I was gonna get these scooters and, and my app was gonna be like great, but the app was very troublesome. Um, that was like part of the reason why I switched partners. But the overall goal has been like 50 cents a minute. So to help people get from like one place downtown, that's a 20 minute walk. It's it's a five minute scooter. That's uh, only like a couple bucks. But I ended up doing a lot of like hourly rentals. So it's like started at 20 an hour and then I brought it up to like 30 an hour because of scooters and the software and everything in business is value creation. And it's like, if you're creating enough value, then it, people are okay with spending more. It's not like I was trying to make a big margin. I've never really netted profit. It's always been like the takeaways in this journey for me, I've been like learning from people, growing alongside people and like having a cool spot downtown. But the pricing, it, it was hourly, it was daily. Like I'd really work with people because when you're a smaller business, like you, you kind of got to absorb any of like the interest you can. So it, it's like, sure, you might have some pricing schemas or, or like what you think that people are gonna want, but then people approach you with what they actually want and you kind of got a level in that middle and at the end of the day, your business trying to create value through a way, mine was scooters. If people came to me looking for scooters, I'd almost always make sure they like left with the scooters. When you were downtown then, were the scooters just going back to your shop no matter what? That's how it was working the best okay. for me. And so like anyone trying to do something like this, it's gonna be best to have like a, a main like tourism rental hub, as well as like some kind of mobility installation throughout the city. Because a lot of people in Grand Haven, they see their, their scooters, they expect it to be like Lime. Like, oh, I can grab it here and park it elsewhere. But then there's other people who just want to be able to ride the scooter in the local area for X amount of time. Yours was different in the fact that like they weren't going off and like scanning the code on an app. They were coming to you and paying you for whatever they were doing. Yes. And then they were bringing them back to you. But a lot of times I would funnel them through the app because I did put a lot of like energy and resources so into creating the app. app and, like, right. Yes. Okay. Or, or like just even when I wasn't there, like, cause people got used to come into this like big hub where I had a bunch of vehicles and I did put in that layer of like, oh, there's gonna be people who are here at 12 a.m. when I'm not here and then they can just scan with the app. Do you know like one of your best days in revenue? Like in that setting it's probably about like 2000 is just opening. That was only with maybe like 25, 30 scooters because a couple of them are almost always down. That was doing a lot of cash rentals like people didn't want to use the app as much but then using like the app and 48 scooters just this past year I went out to bike time in Muskegon, Michigan and that was like 2500 in revenues. There aren't many occasions like that because it was like just a couple blocks of like really high demand where I was able to set up without like a bunch of parking zones. I kind of just rolled up on Muskegon and, and deployed and people loved it but at the same time it's not like super official. So are these like getting worked on or what? The, these are the maxes. Um, these ones all have like 
from end of last season, they had like some pretty more serious damages, like the stalk got bent when it got crashed into a curb. They're super complex, but they're also simple. Sometimes they just don't wanna work. Sometimes they wanna work. Scooters have a mind of their own. This one, this is like the IoT unit. So that's what actually has like the GPS and cellularly communicates. So some of them had like issues with their communication. This guy has like a bent like steering column. So if you were to like turn it, it wouldn't really it wouldn't feel right and it wouldn't ride right. Uh, but I haven't even been able to touch all these for like months because I've been trying to get all them working out there and deployed and then facing like the same. I haven't really even been in operation this season. You need a lot of tools to work on these. Those are all like the batteries for uh, the like year two or the year three and four fleet. It was nice because they all have swappable batteries. So instead of like going out and picking up a bunch of scooters, you could just swap the battery in. But those are like, those are from Segway. Nowadays, you can only get them in like 200 and, or 2000 something minimum quantity order. What's like the lifespan of a scooter? It's like about two years. And that, given that was with Michigan's off season, so it's like maybe an, an odd, like 12 months. So in one battery charge, how long can like a person typically ride it? They advertise these as like 20 to 40 miles, but it's like probably about, like 15 to 25 depends how big you are if you're riding up and down hills the whole time in like about 15 15 to 25 miles yeah they would bring them back to your shop so you would charge everything there yep now you would just replace batteries yeah and then i would be there to like engage with everyone because like if you're trying to rent a scooter and you're having issues the biggest thing with like a, a ride share scooter or a rental in general is like people are looking for convenience or fun and so if they're having a lot of trouble getting onto the scooter or say they're getting charged and the scooter isn't acting how they're supposed how it's supposed to or the bike then they're all like stressed out they're like worried about like the money they're spending they start to get stressed out whatever so you just want to be there to like walk people through the process to keep a smile on their face make sure everything's smooth until they like get out and then they understand how the scooter works. Some people would think the brake is the throttle. Like it all seems like simple when, when you do the job, but like when you're coming and renting, you expect that to be put there or catered to you in some way, shape or form. So if it is digital, it's gotta be like flawless, seamless, like really designed for them. And I would just keep myself there as like that additional human component on top of whatever app I had put together or, you know, it's the whole rental flow. It's how they experience the value creation. Like if someone crashed it or something, is that something that you can, are they signing something like liability wise that they yeah. have to cover the cost of the scooter if they destroy it and that's something you can track or how do you do that? As a company policy, you could put that into place, but I kind of just absorb that. I mean, like if it, you can't really insure the scooter damage wise, it doesn't make sense. What you really want to cover with insurance is someone getting hurt or in a car crash and then they're coming after you or your family or your company so you use like a llc or some other like you you want to make sure that you're not getting sued for everything you own in the company and then beyond it so you're putting up that legal boundary as like a business like hey i'm a limited liability company people can only come after me for this if you have a really expensive insurance plan liability then that can absorb up to like a million per occurrence or whatever the limit is set as i lost a couple along the way it's it's tough to enforce because if some little rascal kid rides your scooter into the channel and sinks it then it's like what are you, are you really going to go after that kid and if you are then you have to like have a lawyer and then that's going to cost probably more already than it is to just eat the cost and figure out ways to like keep them from destroying it again in the future are these faster are they like more durable it's they're more durable the rideshare scooter design like per se you were buying the same exact this is the segway as a rideshare scooter it's a segway max 2.2 because it has a swappable battery if you were going to buy the segway rideshare version of it it's going to be like the g30 something and then it, this would have like it wouldn't be there it would have a, a folding component the ride the rideshare ones go a little slower they're toned down i mean if you were to buy like the consumer version you'd have you'd be able to use like a bluetooth app and access it the main difference is like more durable like neck coupler for instance for people like leaning back on them and what about like tires do you have to ever replace tires so like the rideshare scooters a lot more often will have like a solid rubber tire or they'll be pre-filled with like uh some kind of like gel substance that will fill the holes. You don't really want to deal with like air filled tires as like a ride share operator. There's like the rental app and then there's also like what I would use to like engage with scooters, set parking zones, 
Um, so like this one, for example, I can uh, put it into like a picked up mode. And so that's saying I'm gonna be taking it on the road to deploy somewhere. And then once I would get it to the actual place that I want it to, to be rented, then I'd hit deploy and that'd make it like rentable through the app. But if it's in a picked up state, it's otherwise like not rentable. So when I'm picking a bunch up, I usually just scan a couple, put them into the, like the picked up state. This one I wouldn't bring because it's low battery. And then that makes it so it's like unlocked. So instead of like bumping it and it's beeping at you, now it, it like can roll and ride. How durable are these weather-wise? They're called IPX5 and it's not technically like waterproof. I've had some go in the drink before and they are okay, but like there are all the, the control units are gelled to like keep water out and uh, they can like withstand rain and elements. I had some really good processes in place and this used to all be really tidy, but things have just been kind of chaotic lately, so. Do you have three tips of advice for any entrepreneur out there? Like one is like strive to actually create value. Like a lot of people go out with the mindset of like, oh, I'm gonna make a bunch of money or I'm, I'm gonna do this thing and it might not even be aligned to what people want. But if as an entrepreneur, you go out and you say like, I'm gonna create value along these dimensions, you really see it like resound in others and you get a lot of like, it, it makes the work feel less like work because you're out there like doing something that's legitimate, not just by however you concocted it or designed the plan, but like how it's received and actually utilized. So even if you're not creating monetary value on that one day that you spent four hours packing up a bunch of charge scoots, putting them on your trailer, getting somewhere, like if everything seems like down, you can create value for like one person or just value creation. That's, that's straight out of like my whole college education. So two, you need a team. Like I've been doing this, this mostly like by myself. I've got a team in my network of sorts. Like I've created a, like this is a very niche thing that I do. And like, I know a lot of people in the industry. So like they help me out, but like predominantly it's been like me solo. That was a lot better when I was downtown had my spot but just like over the years if certain people didn't make their way to me like if my mechanic didn't I would have been so down in the gutter in my head so it's really like find yourself a good team one or two people is better than like a bunch of people if you have a couple of A players and instead of like a A, a and a C because that C is gonna bring everyone else down so Two, yeah, probably like a good team. And three, I mean, you decide when you're done. I haven't given up this far. I've been saying like, oh, like the five year metric, like most businesses take five years to become profitable. But like, there's a lot of things I can do in this world. And I don't know if I want like it to be scooters anymore. So I'm in like this process right now of deciding if I'm sick of dealing with municipal crap, with insurance stuff, with all like, I've learned so much. Decide uh, at a certain point, like what you want to be doing. It's always good to get out there and like try new things. But like right now I'm, I'm kind of burnt out. Like it's been a long summer and this is like the several consecutive summer where it's kind of felt like what's going on. I'm, I'm 23, there's a lot of stuff to do in the world. I've been scooter guy for a long time. So I'm just kind of, I'm kind of sick of all the motions. But like ultimately I decide that, I guess you just gotta, you gotta know like how long to stick in it and how long to like let something go.